So if you saw my interview last week with St. Nicholas, better known as Santa Claus, you know what I asked for him for Christmas. Right? I asked for a Tesla. So I was really excited this morning when I got up and I was you know, looking to find the, the car right in front of my door. And he came through. He came through. I did get a Tesla for Christmas. But um, I think I have to specify to Santa next year that I want a little bit of bigger model than this. But um, thank you, Santa, and thank you to your elf for bringing this to me. Um, I want to share with you a story. And if you're friends with me on Facebook, you know I just shared this about a week ago. But it's a story that really moved me and actually brought me to tears. True story, it actually happened exactly one week ago from today. There's a small village in northern, northern Alaska, very close to the North Pole, called Deering, Alaska. Very, very small community. And obviously, if you think it's cold here these last few days, right, they're living in complete darkness at this time of year and complete frigid Arctic weather all the time. And there's a young family there in the community that had a small little child, and the child had a major medical emergency. And they had to get the child medevaced out by plane to one of the bigger cities. The problem, as you can imagine, in that area, especially this time of year where it's darkness all the time and it's so cold, the problem is that the lights went out on the small little landing strip in town. And there's no way the pilot, as brave as the pilot was, there's no way you can land a small plane like that without any lights to get there. So the man who was in charge of the lighting system in the town was very, very distressed because of all the frigid weather, all of the difficulties. So he decided to do something that I just thought was so beautiful. He contacted the entire town. He told everyone, bring your ATVs, bring your cars, bring your trucks, bring whatever you have that have headlights. And all of the, there's only like 35 families in the village, but they came and they all parked their cars where the lights usually are for the landing strip. And they had to stay there in the frigid cold, becoming the lighting system. And the brave pilot came in, they came in, they swept up the child and the parents, and they brought them off to have the surgery. And thank God it had a very happy, happy ending. And I thought to myself, you know, it kind of fit with today's first reading, right? The people who walk in darkness. These people who live that close to the North Pole, which I think is crazy, but they live there, and God bless them. I would never go there. I probably shouldn't say that, because then the cardinal might send me there. But, um, <laughs> um, but anyway, I don't want to go there. Um, but anyway, they, these are people who live in darkness, not only walk in darkness, but as a community came together and think how different that is from today's gospel, right? They weren't living in the darkness of northern Alaska. They weren't living in that cold. They were living in the Middle East, in Palestine. And you would think you would welcome in the Savior of the world. You would think you would be happy to take in another, but we know that they're not. Whatever it is, if it's selfishness, or it's preoccupation, or it's just too busy, or whatever. What a contrast that is. And the second point of my homily um, comes from a wonderful book. It was written about 500 years ago, and is written by St. Ignatius of Loyola. And if any of you went to a Jesuit college or university, I'm sure you're very familiar with St. Ignatius. But really the most important contribution I believe that he made to salvation history is this wonderful book called The Spiritual Exercises. And I have to say it's a book that has transformed my life during the last 36 years. It's a book that I go to time and time and time again. And basically in this book he teaches us how to pray in many different and beautiful ways. But my favorite way when he explains Christmas time, he explains this type of prayer which is known as composition of place, or we call it a, an imaginative type of prayer. And what St. Ignatius encourages us to do is not just to read the Bible as if it were another book, 
but actually to place yourself in the Bible scene, to be there in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And it's a beautiful way to pray. It's not our common way to pray as Catholics today, which I think is sad. As you know me, I'm trying to promote this type of prayer all the time. And so every year I always go back to Bethlehem. And I wanted to share with you my composition of place. And St. Ignatius says you should try to smell. Like, what does the stable smell like? And if you've ever worked on a farm or near a farm, you know it doesn't smell too nice. And what do you see? It's like the equivalent today would be saying, you go have your child in my garage or something. Not the most beautiful scene, very poor, impoverished type of setting. But as I go there, and I always picture myself as this like little shepherd boy, I guess I should consider myself now an elderly shepherd or something, but in my mind I'm still young, and I go in there, and as I walk in, as much as I know it's poor, the first thing I always see is St. Joseph smiling. And I see St. Joseph holding the baby Jesus in his hands. And he's beaming from ear to ear. And I see Mary lying there. And I'm so bold, I go up and I say, Joseph, may I hold the newborn child? And I love to do that. I do that all the time with children and baptism. I just had a baptism the other day. Just to hold a little child in your hands and to smile at the child. And as you know, they mirror back to you and they smile back. And I picture the baby Jesus doing that. And then I give the baby Jesus to Mary, and I talk with them, and I just say, what is this all about? And it's a beautiful conversation. And I encourage you all, during these next few days, go to Bethlehem. I'm sure you all have a nativity scene on your front lawn or in your house, but go to Bethlehem. Try to place yourself in the scene. What would you say to Mary? What would you say to Joseph? What would you say to the Christ child as you hold him in your arms? A beautiful, beautiful way to pray. And as I say, I always see their smiles. Their smiles that come from a deep-seated joy to know that the Messiah has come, that God is faithful to his promises. That's really the joy of Christmas, this long-awaited Messiah has finally come. God has come into our world, and all will be well. So I want to end my homily with an injunction, I guess, or an encouragement for all of us. Let us be like the people of Deering, Alaska. Let us continue to be those people of our parish that, as I know, we're all so generous in helping out the poor among us. We're all so generous in bringing the food bags and the giving tree and all of those things. Let us continue to be those type of people who recognize Jesus in each other, who serve one another, who will get up in the middle of the night, even though it's not convenient, even though I don't have that much gas in my car, even though I don't want to be sitting out in the frigid, landing strip. It's for another person who is in need, another person who deserves my love and my respect. And as Jesus came down from heaven, he came into our world, he came to teach us that true love is sacrificial love. May we continue to give ourselves to each other in imitation of Jesus. And may we not be like those people in the Bible scene who turned him away, turned him away, turned him away. But let us embrace him. Let us hold him as we come up for communion and we hold Jesus in the Eucharist in our hands. May we look down upon him. May we smile at him and see him smiling back at us and saying, I'm here. I am your God and I am leading you into everlasting life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.